Hi guys, it's Blair here. I'm here to do my monthly wrap up for January or what I read. Um, if you know that I did change some of my goals and I talked about that a little bit in my previous video which I believe was called Bookish Confessions. Um, so I'm just going to show you the books that I read. I read four books. I read two non-fiction and two fiction which you know that's actually pretty good because I did have that goal of at least reading that many a week but I did it in the month so I'm quite actually happy with that. Below are the links to my reviews so I'm just going to show you them and give you um, a star rating uh, and maybe just tell you a little bit about them and then I actually have a small haul for you guys because I have about three books that um, two that I got for review and one that I bought for myself okay so the two fiction uh, not fiction books rather that I read this month uh, is the best year of your life by Debbie Ford? And I apologise for the lighting. I'm not. Um, I mean, I've changed my room around again, my office space anyway. It's actually in my craft room, so I'm not really sure about the lighting or the webcam. So I read that, and as you can see, very posted, noted, very well loved, and I actually gave this book a five star rating, I believe. Um, I really, really enjoyed this book. It has exercises as well, which something for me is definitely when I'm reading a non-fiction book, I like to have something that I can sort of put into practice as well. Um, part of me post it noting it is that um, I'm comprehending and keeping things and keeping notes and I even at some points in the book was, let me see if I can find one, writing notes inside the book and I don't usually do that I definitely don't do that with my fiction books but um, every now and again I find a non-fiction book that really I just resonate with and is perfect for my for my life right now and I definitely like to write in it because um, sometimes when I write on post-it notes I lose them or I want to go back over this book and it's and it just helps me so this is about making the best year of your life and I I've had a really interesting already start to the year um, and the interesting thing is that this book definitely helped me make those changes as well. Putting into perspective how I felt about myself, um, where I wanted my life to go and how I could make my life a lot better, clearer, simple um, and deal with my shadow side as well. Which if you guys don't know, shadow side is, is really just, um, it's not a negative part of yourself, but it is a dark part of yourself that we all have, and um, it's just a really fantastic um, book that I would definitely recommend if you're interested in looking into yourself a lot deeper, and really changing and evolving as a person and as a spirit too. Then I read The Art of Paper, which I've talked about before on my channel, so I'm not going to go into detail. I enjoyed this book. It was an interesting read. It wasn't fantastic. There was a few things I loved, a few things that just were okay. Um, definitely a coffee table book, but I'm not really sure whether I'm going to be keeping it, because I've already read it, and I've written down the um, list of the artists that I like, so if I really feel like looking at their artwork, I can do it online. But I'm really glad I read something a little bit different for a change. Um, my cat is in here too. Just gotta make sure she doesn't wee on everything. You don't wee on things, do you, Penny? You do? Okay. So, I just recently finished this a couple of days ago, which is Slide by Jill Hathaway. This is one of the bargain books I picked up um, on Amazon a, a couple of months ago when I did that massive, massive hardback binge buy. Um, and I'm, I'm, to be honest with you, I'm glad I got it on special because it wasn't anything fantastic. It was definitely a really enjoyable read. It's probably what I needed during this time in my life where my brain is just, ugh, it's just shutting down, um, or it has been shutting down in terms of trying to process other people's problems, which is weird because I read to escape, but I just can't deal with reading problems. Um, well, I couldn't, uh, but, you know, and I think for me... I had just finished a circle, which I'm going to show you soon, and there were some, some things that happened in it, or some things that were kind of similar, 
And I think maybe if I had have read this book a little bit later, like a couple months um, later, I would have probably enjoyed it a lot more because Circle was very raw in my mind. But at the same time, there was just some things that just felt lacking in this book. Um, things that didn't wrap up for me enough. And, I mean, the characters are really great. I really felt that the connection between the main character and her sister was really well developed. Um, but everything else just felt a bit weird. Um, the interesting thing is the plot and the subplots um, and the, the twists and things like that were really intriguing. And I like the... Um, I like knowing about different people's issues and how that resolved. But at the same time, I don't really feel like it resolved at all. I feel like it was just so rushed. And at the end of the day, um, I just it just didn't sit right with me at all. Um, in in a larger spectrum of my enjoyment of reading, but I did enjoy it. I would recommend you read it if you're looking for something. Um, if you're not looking for something serious, really. I mean, it has really dark undertones, but if you're not looking for something serious, and you know they're not going to go into it thinking it's going to be the best book ever, definitely read this book. It's pretty enjoyable. I think I gave it, um, I think I gave Art of Paper like three stars, and I think I gave this three and a half. And then I read The Circle, um, and I gave this a 4.5 star rating and I mean for me to read a, a book like this in a week it, I really challenged myself and I'm really proud of myself um, thumbs up to me personally because I generally tend to one shy away from really big books and two it takes me a while to read it but I kind of developed this thing where I re I read one book one fiction book and one non-fiction book now I think that really works for me. I've kind of gone off the bend a little bit during this period of time where I'm just erratic and not being able to make proper decisions about anything or final decisions about anything. But um, my reading this, this was perfect for me too because I love witches and this book was a very unique spin on that. At the same time, I'm going to say this, it was cliché. It was cliche in some parts, but for the majority I felt like it was a really interesting spin on witches. Just the way it was told. I think that's more to the point that I really enjoyed the way it was told. I heard really fantastic things about this book and it definitely wasn't a 100% 5 star rating for me. Um, I mean you can go and look at my review as well. But I definitely liked that there were so many characters in this book and I got to really um, have an in-depth um, experience with each of them. And it's a healthily <laughs> posted noted and happily posted noted. Um, I definitely do believe this is a setup book. It's a, it's, it, I mean, it's a freaking huge setup book, but it definitely felt like a, you know, a first book in the series. Like once I finished this book, I knew that I had to read the next book. It wasn't at all, oh, I'm satisfied that I can just finish here. Because it is a trilogy anyway, and I was anticipating it. But um, I've ordered the next book because I do want to finish... Well, I do want to actually finish the series because I'm really intrigued about where this story is going to go. And I love the setting too. I just... I love reading books that are set in different places. And this book is set in Sweden. So Sweden, one of my favourite places to think about going one day. Um, and yeah, so I'm going to put my review link below. And let's get on to the book haul. So, the books that I got, uh, well I'll just show you the book that I bought for myself. I bought The Cure, Cure for Dreaming by Cat Winters. Um, I'm not, I haven't seen it very much, but I don't really watch too many YouTube videos um, anymore. I mean, I'm very selective because... Um, I just am nowadays, so otherwise I can sit there all day. But I don't think I've seen this on anyone's um, hauls or anything lately. I don't know. What, I think it was. I came out this year or last year. Let me just check. Um, I oh know it came out last year. Must have been like end of last year. But it's just so beautiful. I'm really obsessed with these kind of books that just 
have pictures. I mean, I know at some stage I'm going to want to read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, but um, I just, I love these kind of things. And it's just, it's beautifully made. Um, and basically, it's, um, I believe it's about a person who, it's, it's kind of like, how do I explain it? I'm really bad at explaining books. Um, it's got like magic and monsters and psychic stuff, I believe, and all that kind of like seances and all the stuff that I love, like that kind of stuff. I love that. Um, so that's why I picked it up. Um, it says that it's a masterful debut maybe oh no that was that would have been her last one i'm reading the wrong thing anyway i'm just going to move on because i just i bought this book guys i bought this book i'm really good at this stuff and then i got two books in the mail for review from some lovely lovely ladies who um, reached out to me and asked me whether i would like to review their books so the first one is by annika jensen and it's called midnight Me meanders and um, interesting fact it says here that she's a senior at high school so that is awesome that she's got her book out and she's in high school still which I just love I love supporting people who are still you know working on their studies and also you know living their dreams so she reached out to me and um, this is based I'll just read you the synopsis it says William Spencer is, a, is, is troubled not only by a uh, stereotypical king but by an invisible disease that seems to be picking his mind apart day by day, leaving him with an unyielding hollow emptiness. His strange yet somewhat effective method of coping involves many late night walks around his sleepy neighbourhood, armed with a pen in the hand and a poem in his mind. Midnight Meanders reveals seeks to reveal the true actions of a teenage mind, not just regurgitate assumptions made by adults. It passes through the stages of anxiety and angst, and of pessimism and encouragement, most of all of discovery. As William well journeys, journeys, uh, journeys through his own mind, revelations are made, relationships are broken and restored, and a faith that once seemed as extinct is now renewed. And I just thought that was really interesting, and I said, yes, yes, I would love to read that. Um, I think I have it penned in for March or April, I'm not quite sure, but I might read it earlier than that. And... Then, um, by Natalie Beaner, uh, she sent me her copy of Never Trust a Happy Song, and I love that cover. It's very, um, mixed media, and I'm, I'm a, a scrapbooker, mixed media artist, so it, to me, the cover is just beautiful. I just, oh, love it. Um, and this one says, when Cassidy Diamond is admitted to a prestigious summer program at Stanford University, she looks forward to being surrounded by people just like herself, smart, studious, and antisocial. But when Cassidy is decided to stay in the Harper family, she meets the vivacious and unhimited daughter, Grace. The two girls clash at first sight. Cassidy is determined not to let Grace distract her from her studies. But Grace wants to show Cassidy that maybe her grades aren't all she's going, that she has going for her, and that life might be more about what might, what life might be about more than building the perfect resume. So I think that's a really good coming of age story. Um, I believe she's in her 20s or 30s, I'm not quite sure. Again, actually, she is also in high school as well. It says here that she juggles her writing with being a senior in high school. Which is awesome. I love supporting people who, again, are in high school and doing their thing. Because I sure know that I love to write in high school too. And if you can get your first book out before you're finished high school, you've got something going for you guys. So that's really good. I'm really excited to read this and support these two lovely ladies. And that is it for today. Uh, well, it's actually not it for today. You will see me in the same clothes when I film my first February picks video. And yeah, so thank you guys for watching and I'll talk to you later. Bye.